aren't you nervous a little? A lot. <laughs> I wonder if all parents who want to adopt feel like this. Uh, probably. You know, but hey, if the social worker can't see what a great mother you'll be. But she will, so there's no question about it. Thanks. Maybe we should go over the questions again. Well, we already did that several times. Well, once more won't hurt. <laughs> Okay, let's see, um, how would you describe your present home environment? No child would be more loved. Nick, you do want this, don't you? More than anything. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. DeWitt. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're a little nervous. Oh, please don't be. Uh, from what I've seen, you two are the perfect candidates for adoption. I was happy to see your name come to the top of the list. Um, after all these months of waiting, it must be a great feeling to be so close. Please, come in. <laughs> Thank you. Lucy! Uh, yeah? You're in big trouble. Aha! Here it is. My last check from Spalding. That's great. Hope you understand. It's the last, as in no more money coming in. Mm -hmm. That's that's okay. That's okay. No matter how much they paid you, you would have been miserable. If you kept it up, Alex and Alan would have given you an ulcer. Can't afford to have an ulcer. We're on a budget now. So puree your credit cards in the Vegematic because we're not going to see this many zeros for a long, long time. I got a great idea. It's always an adventure. What are you talking about? A commercial. What? You should do a commercial. Who needs the Spaldings? You're gonna give me an ulcer. <laughs> Good morning. I think it's a little too early to assume that. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say I think the rest of the day is gonna be lousy. <laughs> now I know it is. Well, if it isn't Clark Kent, are we leaping tall buildings today or just racing speeding bullets? Oh, Fletch, I am sorry I'm late. I know it's not a way to start your day. Tell me about it. Lots of lawyers do it. I am well aware of that, honey, but I have not, and never will, put myself into that category. Well, of course not. But you should do this commercial, Ross, because you're the best of lawyers, but nobody knows about it. You think that's quite true? Well, only because you've been out of circulation so long. With Spalding, I mean. The ordinary people, the people who really need your help, they don't even know you're available. They'll find out. Right, and, and the commercial is the perfect way to do that. Look at that, Ross. All we have to do is package that. That? That, yes, that, that legal expertise, that talent, personality, good looks. We package it, we put it out there so people know that it's available. Just like cold cuts or soap suds. Yes. Uh -huh. No, wrong word. Um, no, you're better than that, Ross. You are a quality product, and people need quality products. So why not put it out there? You're serious about this, aren't you? Absolutely. This is the age of information, Ross, and information is power. And power to the people. That's what you do, right? You mm. defend people's rights, yes? I can give you a dozen reasons not to do this kind of thing. I'll give you the biggest reason of all to do it. Mm. You said Spalding was 80% of your income, yes? Uh. So to replace that requires something big. Something that will give your practice a, a jump start. Oh, delightful. Now I'm a used car. Wrong word. Something that will give your practice a real jump Something... What? Something what, honey? Uh, something sleazy, something desperate, something a little crass, something a little 800 ambulance chaser? Ross, honey, mm. you're really looking at this the wrong way. Mm. Honey, try to see it my way, okay? Now, I've always tried to broaden your horizons, yes, and you've usually liked it. I don't quite see this connection. 
Connections, that's what I'm talking about, Ross. A commercial is the greatest way to connect to the greatest number of people. Do you know how many people you can reach with one commercial? People who really need your help, honey. Blake, please. Look, 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 look at this space, okay? Mm. This, this is the guy next door. This is, is, is a man women can confide in. The son a mother never had. This is... You are a natural loss, daytime or prime time, if only 2% of the people who actually saw this commercial... No. ...called in. It is undignified, and that's all there is to it. Honey, you can't do anything undignified. I won't. I won't let you. I'll make you a deal. You make this commercial, you don't like it? You think it's undignified? We'll forget about the whole thing, okay? Okay. I'll think about it. Good. Hurry up and think. I book studio time at nine. Cut the wide-eyed, innocent look. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Last night. Last night? I can't believe that you would actually do something like that. He told you. Oh, you did. It was written all over you. I can't believe you, of all people, would be the last person I thought would set a guy up like that. Well, like what? Oh, manipulating him, surprising him. Getting him when his guard is down and then just, you know, dropping him like a hot potato. All for that boring, oh, boring dinner party. With my father, no less. In for a boring surprise party. Lucy, you know how I hate surprises. That. Oh, yeah, that. Yes, that. What do you think I was talking about? That, of course. I, I just... I figured that, you know, you got it. You may as well flaunt it, right? I thought you might enjoy it. No, I enjoy running this company and making deals. Hell, I'll dance on the desk barefoot with you if I want to. Now that, that was fun. But what I don't enjoy is being hoodwinked into sitting for hours listening to 50 long-winded speeches. Everybody patting themselves on the back for what they have made me what I am today. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's nothing. Lucy. Well, really, I thought it was quite lovely. Uh, Ellen Michael, you might at least pretend to be a little grateful. All in all, I think things could have turned out much worse. What happened to the original charges that were brought up against you? Well, thanks to Ross Marler, they've been reduced to criminal mischief. I think I'll be serving some community service for about a year or so. Yeah, I thought I'd mention that to you already. Oh, yes, you did. I'm sorry. Uh, so you're still trying to focus public opinion, right, on what's needed in the neighborhood. I figure if I can just keep up public awareness, then maybe something will change. You know, without it, it won't get any better. That's why I'm really grateful for this interview, Fletcher. What's that? I said I'm grateful for the interview. I mean, it just gives me a chance to get the real story oh. across, you know. The yeah. Fletcher Reed way, <laughs> you know, honest and straightforward, no holds barred. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, originally, when I set those dumpster fires, I did it out of a, a sense of desperation. You know, I wanted to draw attention to official neglect. So now I figure if I can just keep the issue out there with the help of the media, then maybe the mayor and city council, they won't forget too soon. Well, look, I, I know that I should have called you before just showing up unannounced at the lodge. I hope I didn't overstep. No. Still, it's generally a good idea to give notice. Of course, your old school chum didn't give you much. Yeah, that was a very spur of the moment. I just wish I'd been with you. So do I. But it was good for me, because I really needed that time to think. Well, I guess Silver Mountain is as good a place to do that as any. Yes, I thought if I got out into the fresh air and pounded the slopes, I'd be able to work things out of my system. Things or me? Me. Everything. Did it work? Yes. It helped. Where's the waiter? Jerry? I'd like some more coffee. Thank you. Holly, I had this feeling on the ride back from the lodge 
And now I'm sure of it. You are different. Something has changed. No, no, it hasn't. Okay, then tell me the truth. Did getting away help you to come to a decision? About me, I mean. Yes. I've made a decision. Lucy to pull those contracts, right, Lucy? Yes. Well, I don't think that's very prudent. I mean, after all, they're one of our oldest and most reliable customers. We've been carrying them for months. Well, I wouldn't quite put it that well, way. Well, what do you suggest we do? Just let them slide? Oh, come on. It's falling a great deal of money. Uh, but that's like a few dollars between friends. <clears throat> They've also done us a lot of favors. Not since I've been president. And, you know, the only time that I met old man Colker was at that dinner last night, and he didn't know who I was either. So pull the contracts, Lucy. Yes, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Well, you are not me, and you are not president of this company anymore. I am, so it is my decision. Well, I merely suggested... Alexander, you have never merely suggested anything in your entire life. Look, all I'm saying... And you don't say things, you order them. Look, it's family trade. I'm not knocking it, I'm just trying it on for size. You know what? I kind of like the way it feels. <laughs> well, I'm glad that makes you happy. And Alex, make way for new generations. Those were your words. I'm just taking them very seriously, that's all. Uh, yes, indeed. So don't worry about that old Calker contract or any of the other old contracts. You should be worrying about yourself. Come on, you're a lady of leisure now. You should be taking care of yourself and expanding your wardrobe and basking in the sun. I could see you just slugging back a couple of mint juleps and playing croquet. I was just offering what I would offer any incoming president, and that is the benefit of my experience. Thank you. Uh -huh. You might try to demonstrate another family quality and use it. Well, if you excuse me, I'll leave you in the capable hands of Ms. Cooper, and you two run the presidency, because I have a marvelous date with the Eggs Benedict at the Country Club. Um. First lesson in dealing with ex-executives, Lucy, get rid of them fast. Yeah, I almost felt sorry for her. Oh, don't be. You have to lay down the ground rules with Alexandra right off the bat, or you will be run all over. Now, what were we? I was actually getting the culprit still. Ah, uh, no, no, freeze. No, I mean, before Alexandra so rudely interrupted us. Tell me about your date. It was a date, Alan Michael, that's all. Besides, why do you care? Oh, I just like to live vicariously through you, Lucy. Besides, after that stunt you pulled last night, I think you owe me. Okay, fine. You're obviously not going to let me off. No. My date. It was great. We had a wonderful time. He was really, really sweet. And uh, a good dancer, too. As good as me? Well, he was good. <laughs> and he took me to this really funky club. It was right outside of town. Which one? Um, I don't really remember the name of that, but anyway, it was really, it was fun. It was a really fun place, and, and we ended up talking together, and, and he was really easy to talk to, and, and we found out that we had all sorts of things in common, and... Yeah, like what? Well, you know, the usual things. Values, likenesses, you know, things you like to do, how you want to spend the rest of your life, that sort of thing. It was, it was amazing. I've never had such an easy time talking to somebody before. And then we went out for a walk, and we walked, and we talked, and we were looking at the stars. Oh, my gosh, they were beautiful last night. Did you see them last night? No. They were, they were gorgeous. And the whole night, it just, it was, it blew. It was gone. Well, it sounds good. like it. <laughs> oh, and the best part, the best part was then we went to the diner. We did? Yeah. I know, I know. Most people don't like going to the diner. But he loved it. He thought it was great. And so we got there, and it was like around 11, so nobody was there, but he had cleared out. And... It was around 11? Oh, yeah. I'm positive. Lucy, <clears throat> I was there, and you weren't. Hmm. Didn't know the country club set got up so early. Well, you know, maybe they never go to bed. These people make their most money when they sleep. Hello, Jerry. Jerry, uh, we're uh, looking for Mr. Roger Thorpe. No trouble, I hope. Oh, no, no, no. There was just some minor damage to his television studio, and uh, we need to ask him some routine questions. Well, he's having breakfast with Miss Lindsay. I think they're just about finished. Thank you, Jerry. 
Would you like to have some coffee while you're waiting? Oh, no, yes, thanks. I, I think I will. Instant, please. Instant? Yes, that's all I drink. Decaffeinated. I'll see what I can do, to detective. Thank you. I don't get some women. What? Their logic, you know? I mean, how does a creep like Roger Thorpe hang on to a beautiful, bright woman like Holly Lindsay? So what you're saying is... What I'm saying is... Uh, no more. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I'm listening. What we have is worth caring for. Those are very welcome words. I've been saying that for a while. And, well, we've come such a long way. Yes. Yes, we have. And I want to work on it. I want to give it every chance to make it. I don't want to appear difficult or dense, so you're really going to have to help me with this. I keep getting the feeling that you're leaving something out. Am I wrong? If you're trying to do things peacefully, what do you do when you see that they're not working? You either accept it or you take more drastic action. Are you okay? I mean, we can do this some other time, Fletcher. You seem a little distracted. No. No, I, I was just thinking. Give me a lot to work with here. Thank you. I'll be in touch. Unless you're saying that you were thinking of leaving me altogether. Is that what this is all about? Absolutely not. Never crossed my mind. No, I'm saying that we still have things to work on. That's all. I'm having trouble with this. I got I'm really sorry to disturb what? you, Mr. Thorpe, but we have to ask you a few questions. Excuse me. The, there was some minor da vandalism to your television studio last night. Uh, what? In private. Uh, no. No No offense, oh. Miss. No, if no, you don't it's mind, it's I, just I mind. Excuse press. me. No, Holly. Really. I've got to get back to work. Oh, come on. Tomorrow. This is no way to start the day. I couldn't agree with you more, Mr. Thorpe, but these questions do need to be answered. Some of these questions are as difficult to ask as they are to answer. They're very intrusive. Mm. Well, that's okay. We understand. Oh, great. That makes my job so much easier. The intent of the process is positive. Uh, as difficult as it may be when you're filling out all the information that is required, it's designed to help would-be adoptive parents and, of course, protect the interests of the baby. It forces you to take a good, hard look at the commitment that you're considering. Great, we understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Okay. There are times in the course of the process when couples decide that adoption is not for them. But since there are so many other couples for whom it is the perfect life choice, it all works out in the end. So, we'll just review the information you supplied in your written application. Ready? Yes. Shoot. Okay. <laughs> I see that neither of you were raised in the traditional two-parent household. Uh, do you think that's had an effect on your view of marriage? Well, actually, uh, that's not altogether true for me. Although I wasn't raised by my birth parents, my, my adoptive parents had a terrific relationship. They were happily married until they passed away, which probably is why I wanted to make sure that my marriage would last. Yes, I feel exactly the same way. Um, it's true that I've made a lot of mistakes when it comes to marriage, but um, I've always felt that with Nick, I had been given a second chance to get it right. Tell me, how do you intend to deal with the responsibilities of raising a child? We'll share them, if that's what you mean. I, we've talked about it a lot, haven't we? Yes, for a while. That's all we talked about. Mm, I see. You're both very busy and involved people. Um, do you plan to have outside help? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, I've already interviewed several people. Um, mm. And I do realize that we are fortunate enough to be able to afford this kind of a service. But I, I do plan on being a full-time mother. Uh -huh. I see you put a premium on uh, education. Well, doesn't everyone? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Some people seem to think that children can learn everything through osmosis. Now, while they may learn a lot, a great deal that way, uh, a sound, well-rounded education is vital. Oh, I... we couldn't agree more. Okay. 
You are of the Christian faith. Do you play, plan to raise a child as, as such? Yes, a community of worship is very important, I... We believe. Mm -hmm. uh, one question comes to mind as we talk, Mrs. Spaulding. I can't help but wonder if you'll have to make uh, special arrangements to accommodate your husband's work schedule. Oh, no, not at all. He works nine to five, just like clockwork. Really? I'm surprised. Uh, most reporters aren't that lucky. You know, actually, um, it's so new for Melinda uh, having me return back to the news business. I think sometimes she forgets and thinks that I'm still working the same Spalding hours. <laughs> oh, isn't that funny? That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh, well, you know how it is. You, you follow one schedule for so long, <laughs> you tend to get used to it. It's natural, really. Uh, I was a writer when we first met. My first love. Before Melinda. <laughs> uh, but Melinda's been very supportive of my decision to go back to my writing. And obviously that means it's going to be a change of lifestyle, but we feel that it's going to be for the better. Mm -hmm. well. Change is always difficult. Even change for the better. So, Mrs. Spaulding, how are you going to accommodate this new uh, schedule? Yes, well, um, I I'm going to leave work. Uh, because, as I said, I want to be a full-time mother, as well as hiring a nanny, at least part-time, until we figure out how our schedules are going to work with each other. Um, and um, I, I don't really think that we know how everything's going to work out until we try it and see. But we are very flexible, and we're going to have a lot of help from both of our families. I note that a Fletcher Reed is one of your references, and your uncle, Mrs. Spaulding, Josh Lewis. Oh, yes, Uncle Josh. He is really thrilled for us. Uh -huh. So do you plan to continue living at the Spaulding Grandview Terrace Estate? Oh, yes, we do. It's a big, wonderful old house, and we live there with Nick's mother, and she couldn't be more supportive. Okay, so uh, we've got that problem with the teleprompter all worked out, so just relax and get ready to roll. Ready when you are, Marty. Okay, honey, you just you just relax because you look gorgeous. Oh, I sounded like Elvin the chipmunk trying to keep up with that teleprompter. Well, that is just because you weren't familiar with the copy, but now you are, dear. You wrote this? Yes, I did. You inspire me. <laughs> it's a bit overpowering. Well, so are you. Ross. This is Mark. Let's lay one down for real this time, okay? It's okay, honey. Listen, if you don't like it, we won't run it. It's as simple as that, okay? So you just you just break a leg. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in five, four, three, two, and. Your life has been forever altered by a single event due to an accident or negligence. As a result, you can't work, but those bills, they just keep coming in. Cut. That's good, Ross. Let's just try to relax and uh, go for a little bit more maturity. Wisdom, okay? We're so rough. All right, and in five, four, three, two, and. Your life has been forever altered by a single event Cut. Do, do. That's very good, Ross. Let's just try and incline our head toward the camera. Okay, not that far. Good. Uh, this time, let's go for a little less formality, okay? Give me a smile. Good, and I need eyes coming right at me. Interest. Intelligence. Okay? Heads up, look right under the camera. Let's do it. Give me care, compassion. Okay. And in five, four, three, two, and. Your life has been forever altered by a single event due to an accident or to a negligee. As a result, you can't work, but those bills, they just keep coming in. to be me. I hope you feel better. Go away, Holly. Go back to Roger again. I want to talk to you. I want to explain to you what happened at the ski lodge, why I had to leave. It's not necessary. I'm a big boy. I can connect the dots. 
I got too close to you. You got scared. I kissed you. You ran. That's not what happened. Roger was suddenly at the door. He followed me there. <laughs> you know, that sounds like a good excuse for a second. Come on, let's get real. You took off with him instead of telling him to get lost. I couldn't. No, you couldn't. Because you wouldn't. You didn't want to. Because no matter how much Roger Thorpe has done to you, he's still the one for you. So go on, Holly. Do not pass go. Go straight to a justice of the peace and live happily ever after. See ya. Oh, Fletch, no wait. You left. Look, I know that we agreed to it, a strictly business and professional relationship. But I can't help but notice when you're in a, uh, a mood. I'm not in a mood. Sorry, poor choice of words. You know what? I'm not going to spend the whole morning saying it. I'm sorry. Nobody asked you to. What I'm trying to say is that I can't help but notice when you bring a different, uh, I don't know, energy into this office. And I'd be a terrible boss if I weren't aware and concerned with the kind of image that you project to people that come through that door. I don't think that I've let it affect my work, Maybe have I? Maybe I just know you well enough to see when something is really bothering you. You're right. I lied. I lied. I didn't have a date last night. And what you're probably picking up on is something really, really stupid that I did. Was well, it that bad? No, it's worse than bad. It's awful. I just... I went out with Bridget oh. last night just to have a good time, you know, and, well, there was this guy there, and, and we played pool together, and he was, he was a nice guy. I liked him. He was a nice guy. So? And so, so that's when things happened, you know, which things started to heat up, and I just, uh, didn't handle it very well, all right? Lucy. A lot of guys out there are jerks, I mean... What makes you think that it's all your fault? Look, I'm probably making this entire thing... What do you call it? A nanhill into a, into a forest. Out of nowhere. Exactly. All right, so I'm making a huge big deal out of nothing. So maybe we could just forget about it. Please, do me a favor. What? Don't ask me any more questions. Let's just go back to our lives and our jobs, and forget about it. Fine. All right. Well, that does it. Thank you, Mr. Thorpe. I hope we didn't inconvenience you too much. I just ruined my morning. Have a rotten day, gentlemen. Same to you, pal. I, mean, I don't get that guy, you know, just when you think he's going to be a little human. Yeah, well, you never know where some people are coming from. Boy, do I know what you mean. Yeah, well, what do you mean? Huh? I've never seen you like this. Are you still thinking about that girl? Oh, look, man, I don't get it. I mean, this girl, she pulls some kind of tease on you and you beat yourself up over it? How come? Look, I just keep, you know, replaying it in my mind. I don't know, it's like some kind of a... Bad accident. Levy, I'm telling you, she led me on, you know? I mean, she had me right to the brink, and then she just... She just pushes me away, you know? And she's all scared, and she just runs off. You know, like I... Some kind of an animal or something. Well, you know her brother, right? God, I hope she doesn't say anything to him. Hey, look, maybe you should say something to him, huh? Defend yourself? I mean, better safe than sorry. Wait a minute, sorry? Sorry for what? Look, the girl said no, and that meant no. And I backed off. I mean, that's what's so weird. Hey, look, I can't figure out why you're getting yourself so crazy over this, huh? I think I'm just a little ticked off, you know? I feel like I should have... I should have seen this coming. I don't know. I, I guess I'm out of practice these days, you know? I can't even read the signals anymore. Well, it sounds like to me she was sending you a mixed bag. You know, they got a name for a girl like this that does these kind of things, and it ain't a pretty one. Yes, this is Roger Thorpe, and I'm trying to find Miss Spalt. Never mind. Roger! 
manager? What on earth? I know what you're up to. Really? Well, it's not going to work. Well, you certainly look upset, dear. Why don't you try a little mantra? You breathe in through your nose, out through You're your not going to destroy what I have with Holly. Oh, no matter who this guy is, or where you found him, or how much you're paying him, I'm here to tell you, you're wasting your money. Oh, oh. no wonder you got veins popping all out over you. <laughs> Are you saying Holly's sleeping with another man? Roger would have killed you. If he had been there when you came back to that room, he would have gone crazy. Yeah, he would have gone crazy, and he might have killed me. But you know what? You still would have gotten in that car with him and gone home with him. Because when Roger whistles, you scurry after him like some little puppy dog. When Roger says jump, you say how high. That's not fair. It's not like that. What do you want from me, Holly? What do you want from me? What are you doing? You, you want the shirt off my back? Is that what you want? You just want the... Come on, don't do that. Come on. What is it with you? Why does it have to be like this? Because I love you. I love you, damn it. I love you. Don't say that. I already did. I don't want to hear And that. I don't care how crazy this I don't is. I don't care if Roger. I don't want it either, but that's the way it is. That's the story. I love you. Now I'm going to go back to work. Because I have other stories to write. Oh, my, Holly's with another man. Oh, how delicious. I do wish I had arranged it. <laughs> You're setting me up. No, oh, not this time. No, no, no. <laughs> I wish I had thought of it, but actually I didn't. <laughs> to think, you cuckolded. <laughs> well, there's a wish I wouldn't even dare to dream for. Hmm. I don't know why you're getting such pleasure in this. Alex, you got everything you want. You got your brother back, you got your company back. Yeah. You're such a smart man, Roger, and you just don't know anything. Well, I know this much. You want me to pay and pay, but I don't know what for. You used me. You manipulated me. You led me by the nose. You made me have some feelings for you again. You deserve to pay and pay and pay. And yes, I'm taking great delight in knowing that Holly's sleeping with another man. The only thing that would give me more delight, I suppose, is knowing that she's there having a great time right at this very moment. Sort of a day of love and delight. Of course, it would help to know that it's going to take you a long time to find out who it is. You could suffer over and over again the indignities of having someone you thought cared about you lie straight to your face. I'm going to find him. Make no mistake about that, and when I do... Nobody's going to be laughing. Your life has been forever no. altered okay, by I think a single event. Due to an accident or due to no, 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 I mean, this tie, it simply didn't work. As Marty, result, Marty, I'm sorry. Work. I think I have but one more in me. Just keep Let's in. lay down one the more, okay? The kids and tuition, as long as we're stopped, the car I mean, no offense to anybody, but could we improve the lighting? Bump it up a half point, just a little tweak, honey. And what? And the, while we're stopped, could we think about the copy? I have. I mean, I, uh, I had this thought, Marty. Maybe if we went right to the meat of the message, and I started out, you need a lawyer. You know what I mean? You need a lawyer. I thought it might be a little more effective, dramatic. What do you think? Okay, we can try. All right. Thank you, Marty. Oh, Marty, sorry to stop again, but, you know, as, as, long, as long as we're taking a break, I had this thought. What if we were to use this desk, huh, Marty? Now, stay with me on this, all right? We use this desk. I sit on the edge of the desk, Marty. Not behind the desk. I sit on the edge of the desk, sort of like so. Lock right in the camera, as if I'm talking to my best friend, eh, Marty? With a book. Marty, holding a book. Great. We, thank you, Marty. A book. Marty, are these pencils going to be here when... Wait, well, it doesn't, well, they can be. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No, wait a minute. This, this is too big. Too big. 
I'm sorry, Barty. I'm sorry. It's just that I'm, I'm going for the right image here. I sort of have uh, in mind uh, something between Orson Welles and Compulsion and Jimmy Stewart and Anatomy of a Murder. I think that about says it. Okay, kids, if we're all on the same page, I think... Uh, just a minute. All right, Marty, you can roll it. Okay, in five, four, three, two, and... Well, I thank you for your care and candor, and although it won't be my final decision, and I'm really not supposed to say this, but in my opinion, you are an excellent couple. Oh, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> okay, I'm impressed by your desire to go back to your writing, Mr. Spaulding, and by the fact that this isn't a new marriage but one that has been tested and uh, only seems to be getting better and stronger. I, so many things. I, I think you'll make wonderful parents. Uh, you've handled the process very well, and it's clear how much you want this. Now, the next step is the follow-up home study visit. Now, all that means is that I'll come out to where you live to see where the baby will live, how things are set up, living arrangements, that sort of thing. Oh, great. I look forward to that. All right, just a few more things, and we'll be finished. Look, um, <laughs> excuse me. I... You know, would it be okay if I have a word with my wife alone out in the hall? I you in the hallway. I was telling Brett that the best thing you've done, the best decision you've made since you've been president, is promoting him. <sighs> Morning. <clears throat> Morning. Budget projections for you and your approval. I think you'll find them to your liking, no surprises. He is an absolute... Einstein, you realize. Makes those figures just dance right off the page. <laughs> I don't know about that, Miss Spaulding. Oh, come on. You've always been far too modest. Nick, what are you doing? Did I make you mad or something? Did I say something I shouldn't No, what? no, no. I'm sorry. I just had to clear the air, okay? I had... I, all that lying in there was making my head spin. We have to tell them what they want to hear. There are so many couples on the waiting list for this baby. It won't be forever. I know, I know. Okay, but just listen to me, okay? Hear me out. Melinda, did I push you into doing something that you don't want to do right now? Maybe something that we're not ready for yet? What do you well, mean? Well, look, we can't, we can't just go on like we're one big happy family just so we can get a baby. We can't go on with this right now until we know that we're capable of putting this marriage back together. We talked about look, this Look, just don't answer yet, we... okay? Don't answer so quickly. Don't answer until you can be honest with me, please. time really. 